Have you been trying your absolute hardest to lose weight? You're dieting, meal prepping, exercising, and doing everything the internet is telling you to do. But the scales is simply not moving. Well, I'm Maria and I'm a registered dietitian who has helped hundreds of people successfully lose weight, even after they had lost all hope. And in today's video, I'm going to cover six common reasons that you're not losing weight, no matter how hard you try, with, of course, their respective solutions. So we all have this butterfly shaped gland at the front of our neck. Now, if you don't know what I'm referring to, it's your thyroid. And one of its main jobs is to control the speed of our metabolism. And an underactive thyroid can make it much easier to gain weight and harder to lose it. And it's more common than people realize and it's seen in women 10 times more often than men, especially right after pregnancy or menopause. And because it develops around these life periods where many people will shrug off oh, it's just extra baby weight or it's menopausal weight gain, it can often just be ignored. But when the thyroid is under-functioning, not enough thyroid hormones are being produced and this can have a knock-on effect on your metabolism. Some of the common symptoms are, of course, the weight gain, but it can also be feeling very tired, experiencing brain fog or feeling cold all of the time. It can be low mood, hair loss and even dry skin. However, for some people, the only symptom that they will experience is weight gain or that difficulty in losing weight. So the first thing that you should do if you think that you might have an underactive thyroid is to go see your GP and ask for a comprehensive blood test. And this will help to confirm whether or not your thyroid is compromised. Now how you eat can also impact your thyroid because there are many vitamins and minerals that are required to help your thyroid function optimally. So if you have been dieting or starving yourself in an effort to lose weight, it's also more likely that you have had a loss of these nutrients that are needed to support your thyroid. And some of the really important nutrients for your thyroid include iodine. And this is important because we don't get iodine from many foods. It's quite hard to come by in the diet. The main sources are dairy, like your milk, yogurt, and cheese. And the other one is fish. And I meet a lot of people who don't like to eat fish and they have also decided to cut out dairy. Already the two main sources of iodine are gone. You can also get iodine from foods like seaweed, but how many people eat seaweed regularly? So if you are vegan or you don't eat fish, it might also be worth considering taking an iodine supplement. However, don't take too much because more is not always better and can be harmful. Selenium is another example of a nutrient that's really important for your thyroid. But you can get your daily dose of selenium by simply eating two to three Brazil nuts every day. However, I really want to highlight that although diet can help, thyroid dysfunction is a medical condition and a diet can't fix it. It requires specific management with your doctor to get the balance right. And if you do have an underactive thyroid, you will likely be on medication for this. And it's important to know that certain foods can really impact the absorption of this medication. And even the timing of when you take this medication can be important. So you should be linking with your medical team and a dietitian to get personalized support for you. Now, as counterintuitive as this might seem, and something that has happened to myself, is that you may be struggling to lose weight because you're simply not eating enough. Now, before you roll your eyes at me and tell me that I'm a terrible dietitian because everybody knows that when calories in is less than calories out, this equals weight loss. However, unfortunately, it is not that easy. Yes, it might initially work the first time you ever cut your calories. You will probably lose weight. That is your first honeymoon diet. I remember the first time I ever tried to diet. I tried to cut out chocolate, the food that I really dearly love. Was I hungry? Yes. Did I lose weight? Yes and no. There comes a point in every diet where you can't cut calories any lower. So we'll say you start on an 1800 calorie diet. You do that for a while, it works. Then you go to 1600 calories. Then all of a sudden you're at 1200 calories and really there's not much more room to cut down any further. And if you keep trying to simply starve yourself, your metabolism and your thyroid, they all start to slow with you. And you end up trying to run this constant uphill battle you will never get anywhere with. You will simply end up frustrated and miserable. So when you get to a point where you're eating less than your basal metabolic needs, which is simply the energy that your body needs in order to just stay alive and function, your body just begins to conserve energy because it thinks it's under starvation. It's like putting your phone on energy saving mode. Now the only way to lose more weight here is to simply starve yourself more by cutting out even more calories. And don't do this. This will really, really damage your health. Or 
exercise even more to expend even more calories. But this would put further stress on your body because it's already missing out on the calories and nutrients it needs. And it's also really hard to exercise when you're absolutely starving. But what happens next is your period will stop if you're a female, your hair will start falling out, your immune system will become less efficient, and you'll also start losing muscle mass and bone density. And what happens then is when you return to a normal diet and you're eating like a normal person, managing your weight can become that little bit more difficult because you have lost muscle mass, which is linked to your metabolism. And starving yourself also has a really big impact on your brain. So your hunger signals can be out of whack for up to a year. And you're gonna find yourself thinking and obsessing about food all of the time. The sustainable and clever way to do this is to support your metabolism instead of crushing it. And how do we do that? Well, I'm glad that you asked. Number one is small energy deficits over time. You'll also be much less miserable and a nicer human this way too. Number two is doing some resistance training to help build lean muscle and support the muscle that you already have. And this will help your body burn more calories over the long term too. Number three, you wanna be eating enough protein to help again with maintaining your muscle. And four is getting enough sleep and managing your stress. These are the five most important things that you can be doing. Now I'm gonna pause here and ask that if you're enjoying the video so far, I would really appreciate it if you hit the red subscribe button below. It really helps support my channel. And if you're looking for healthy high protein recipe ideas, I'd recommend following me over on Instagram. Now I'm gonna be your very brutal and honest big sister or best friend here. But the next reason why you might not be losing weight is that you are giving in to the very common excuse that your metabolism is broken. And this is something I hear a lot. And in fact, I even thought mine was broken at one point too. So we're gonna say that from point one, your thyroid, we checked it out and it's working. Maybe you are now thinking, okay, well I've fallen for mistake number two. You've been not eating enough for too long and now your body is stuck in this starvation or this survival mode. Well, I'm gonna give you some good news here and just give you a good shake. But we do know that from the research, once you cop yourself on and you do start to eat more food than you would give to a toddler, you start giving your body the nutrition that it needs as a functioning adult, your body's ability to burn calories begins to return to normal within a few days. Your body is not stuck in a starvation mode and you have not permanently damaged your metabolism. Now, yes, your basal metabolic rate may be lower because you've lost muscle mass, but you're not at a point where you're stuck beyond repair. And I will empathize that it can be very difficult to change from eating very little to trying to eat more to support your body, but it is important and it makes life so much nicer. Now I'm gonna be the honest big sister again and say that maybe you are actually eating too much. And don't become an angry crowd here. I know I just said that maybe you're not eating enough. Weight loss is a science in itself, where your diet is unfortunately one of the most sensitive factors. And it could tip you off the edge if you go overboard. And sometimes people begin these new healthy lifestyles. They start working out, going to the gym and trying to build muscle by doing resistance training. But sometimes people take it a little bit too far. They think that whatever they eat is gonna turn into muscle and that will help them burn fat. But unfortunately, it's not that easy. And drinking all the protein shakes in the world and all the chicken breasts on their own will not help you gain muscle. Because if you are eating more than your body needs, regardless of where it comes from, if it's a chicken breast or a protein shake or not, if you're eating more than you need, the excess energy will be stored as fat. So just because you started exercising for weight loss, does not mean you can triple your portion sizes. Portion control still matters. Now it can also be that you're not tracking what you eat closely enough. You don't have to count every single calorie, but it's very easy to go overboard with things like sauces and dips, or a version of this here and there. So a lot of people eat really well for a few days. They're very strict with their diet. They count and track everything. They're hitting all of their goals Monday to Friday, but then they slip up just for one day. But on this day, they decide not to track anything. They think it's fine. It's just one day. I'll have a little bit extra peanut butter on this today. A little bit of more of a drizzle of this here. And it's not extreme. It's not binge eating or overeating by any matter, but it's just a little more loose but this one or two days of not being as mindful about what you're eating may have actually unraveled all of your hard work Monday to Friday. And I see a lot of people that go extreme diet and then they're very relaxed. 
Whereas if you actually just practice a small bit of self-control consistently, it tends to work out better. Now, I'm not saying you can't ever go to a party and enjoy yourself, but you should think of your food intake over the course of a week, not just on individual days. Think of it like running a marathon, for example. If you go out too eager and you sprint at the very start, you're likely gonna be very, very uncomfortable towards the end. And the people who just took it consistently from the very beginning may even pass you out. And I wanna stress that you might not even realize that you're doing this because it doesn't need to be big binges. But what happens is the days that we decide to be that little bit more lax, we unconsciously really do start nibbling a lot more. And when you're trying to lose weight, it is that delicate balance that can be very easily set off by a few handfuls of the wrong things. Now the final one is going that step further. And this is where you might be very strict and then you do end up binge eating. And binge eating involves rapidly eating large amounts of food in a short period of time. And even if you're binging on relatively healthy foods like nuts or dark chocolate, it can still prevent you from losing weight. And in fact, binge eating can make you gain weight over the long term. If you find that you're binge eating frequently over a prolonged period of time, I'd really recommend seeking support from a healthcare professional. I also have a video where I talk about my own struggles with this and I have some tips there that will hopefully be helpful. But know that you're not alone because binge eating is much more common than many of us realize. And there is light at the end of the tunnel. Now you could also be simply after hitting a weight loss plateau. And this happens and it does not necessarily need to be a bad thing. But I have a future video coming out on this where I explain how to identify if you have hit a true plateau and the steps to take to get out of it. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that one when it's released. And as a thank you for making it all the way to the end of the video, I want to let you know about a free recipe ebook, which I have linked in the description box below. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope this video has been helpful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps support my channel. And I'll see you again next week for another video. Thanks for watching.